Dean, thanks for taking some time out to join me and welcome to Barney. First interview as, as head of football. Must be really pleased to be here and just tell us a bit about what attracts you to joining the club. Yeah, I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, we've been walking extremely hard collectively uh, behind the scenes to try to give us uh, the best team possible uh, on the pitch. And um, everyone's welcomed me. There's a lot of good people at the football club. And uh, as, pe as people know from previously, I was in discussion with our owner before. And then uh, we stayed in contact. And that's how really it come about. And I was offered the head of football role by our owner. And uh, I thought, why not? Have a go at it. And I've enjoyed it so far. It's been a really exciting summer for the football club. Obviously, Harry Kuehl's joined as head coach. Paul Butler's joined. The whole backroom setup's been announced. It's an exciting time for the club. Yeah, look, it's, this is where the foundations are laid this time of the season. You're laying it for uh, coaching staff, recruitment staff, uh, medical staff. We've had everything to do, really. Uh, and it started, I think I joined on the 9th of June. And it started then, it started straight away. So it's been a really, really chaotic time. But it's been enjoyable, it's been challenging. And uh, we're still not out of the woods yet. We've still got a lot of work to do. Um, and the key, the, the key components are really is to get a good football team. You know, there's players, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. So we do need to recruit some more players. Um, and that's what we've been trying to do. With the recruitment, when you set out to recruit a player, just what kind of profile are you looking for? Is it going to be someone that matches A, what Harry's looking for tactically, but B, is the right fit for Barnet Football Club? Yeah, everyone will say that about that football club. We want the right fit for your club and stuff like that. But realistically, it comes from, it comes from Harry. Um, we've sat down, we spoke about the balance he likes in his side, the different formations he likes to play. Uh, we profiled every player. Um, in the sense of what he's looking for and uh, we just went through that in detail and you know my job then was to go out put a recruitment structure in place which I did and uh, we got to walk straight away um, and I think we've done quite well for the position we were in I think we inherited nine or ten players mm. uh, some have left that's going to happen when a, new, when a new head coach comes into any football club but um, I think we've done all right I think the last bit we're looking for the icings on the cake now to make sure we've got a solid squad there's a really nice mix of young talent coming through and like the likes of Kian Flanagan joining out of like academies from, from the Premier League but you've got your experienced heads as well the Jamie Turleys the Willisons for example do you think the blend that's coming together is looking good? Yeah look we played really well yesterday and I think we've been competitive in, in all our pre-season games but pre-season sometimes can be false mm. um, it is about individual fitness pre-season that's my personal mm. belief on it it's individual fitness and making sure you get a clean bill of health coming through pre-season because that gives you a foundation as a player to kick on and hopefully have a positive season. Um, and football is very individual, even though it's collective and team, but players do think of themselves quite a lot. Um, from our point of view on the recruitment side of things, I think, you know, anyone's watched sort of my teams before, this isn't my team, it's Harry's team, it's our team together. Look, I, I like athletic players, so I like people who can run. So when we and Harry spoke about that, uh, right at the start, it, it, he was of the same mindset, so that was helpful. Um, but I think if you look at our recruitment, we've been really patient because I think I felt the market would come back round to us, and it has done. Now we're starting to be offered like a lot of league players, um, and because League One and League Two, in my opinion, are in financial, real financial difficulties, um, and even us at the national league level, we are even though it's probably the strongest the divisions ever been. So we've stayed patient and we're waiting for the market to come back around and hopefully it makes a good sign it, over the next couple of days. It was going to be my next question. The EFL starts this weekend. Does that give us a sort of even bigger pool to start picking from, from players who might have been on trial at League One, League Two clubs that, that haven't been signed up, but have obviously immense talent to play in the National League that could now become available? Well, they are available. If you look at the amount of players that are still out of contract, League Championship, League One, League Two, there's numerous players, more than ever. And that's just all because of League One and League Two sides are, are going with smaller squads. Um, but our division's got tougher. So if you look at the National League now, some of the teams in it, you know, I'm not going to talk about the finances or spend that like that, but some of the teams in it are very ambitious. I'm nearly sure uh, the 2022-23 campaign, uh, we're going to have financial caps within it, wage caps within, uh, within, the, within the division. I'm nearly sure that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so I know a lot of clubs are trying to get out of it this year and they're going to throw money out to do that. For us as a club, what is the ambition in the next 12 months? Obviously, the club as a whole had a very disappointing last season. Is it about sort of rebuilding and starting again and, and really giving our fans something to shout about? I think we've got to take it one game at a time. Mm. You know, I think that's very important. And 
I can turn around and say we want to do this, we want to do that, but there's 20 other two, 22 other teams in the division that want to do this and want to do that. But take it one game at a time, one week at a time, and a week in this business is such a long time. So I think, you know, we've got an athletic side, we've got good physicality about our side. Um, we've got lads, hungry players. We've definitely got a good blend, like you spoke about before. Uh, can we gel it all together? and see how we get on in our first game against Notts County because that's, that's really that's all, that can, that's all that's going to matter really it's the first game of the season so which we're all looking forward to You mentioned that we've still got a bit of work to do obviously the goalkeeping department's been well spoken about yeah. with fans Harry Kiel for example obviously it was really unfortunate what's happened to Jake Askew I assume that's mm. top of the list now to get sorted Yeah it has been all along like I said we've been patient it's probably the most difficult position to recruit I find goalkeeping and centre-backs are probably the most difficult position to recruit everyone says centre forwards, but centre the forwards do come along and um, but yeah goalkeeper and we, we're going to continue to stay patient so we can sign the right goalkeeper what we feel suits their style of play Just lastly what would your message be for the supporters obviously it's a great time for the country with fans back in the stands and hopefully again as I was saying we have something for the fans to shout about and they can all get right behind us from the off with that home game against Notts County yeah, I think we want to show them that we're all on the same page. You know, we want, uh, want to create a positive environment. And to do that, we've got to give our supporters something to sing about. And only winning football matches and winning them in the right style, for me, will give them something to, to sing about. Um, there's no point in talking about last year. That's the past. I'm a big believer in uh, living for today, looking forward to tomorrow, and learning from yesterday. They're my beliefs in life. And I think if we can create that togetherness, that positive togetherness with our supporters, you know, all the way from our chairman, all the way down to all our staff members. We want to, we want to create an environment where everyone wants to be. And you only do that when you win football matches.